I know as the year is coming to an end, we usually feel tired. We usually feel there's so many things we've had to do during the year. Some of the plants might not have gone as you wanted them to go. Some of the things might not have worked. You might have failed. You might have faced a lot of imposter syndrome. You might have faced a lot of issues when it comes to executing what you wanted to do this year. This time brings us at a point of being weary where you feel discouraged. You feel tired. You feel you can't take it. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how to handle burnout as a Christian. Without further ado, let's get right into this episode. Welcome to For His Glory podcast. Welcome. If you're new here, my name is Faith. I'm delighted that you're tuning in. Before I start any episode, I always pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you so much for the gift of life. I thank you so much for your mercies that are new every morning. I pray that as I share your word, you'll speak through me. May you guide me to articulate the oracles from your throne. May you help me speak to someone out there who is struggling with burnout. And I pray that by the time we finish this episode, they'll live relieved because you're the God who gives us rest. You're the God who heals us. You're the God who wants us to live a life free of anxiety, free of worry, and free of anything that constrains us. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, that you sent us. And through his teaching, he tells us that he gives us rest. So let us rest in that rest today as I share your word. And I pray that this word will fall on fertile ground. It will leave us encouraged, revitalized, and on the right path of following you as our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. So, what is burnout? To my understanding, burnout is feeling weary, is feeling tired, is feeling deflated. A couple of weeks ago, I was undergoing some terrible burnout. This burnout had been caused by a lot of things I was doing. I felt my life wasn't in order. I felt tired. I felt I couldn't do much. I felt all I needed to do was just abandon everything that I was doing. So while I was praying to God and telling him, God, I feel tired. What should I do? I feel weary. He led me to the scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. And it says, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Let's read until that. It says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is a call to anyone who feels weary. I know as the year is coming to an end, we usually feel weary. We usually feel tired. You might have failed. You might have faced a lot of imposter syndrome. You might have faced a lot of issues when it comes to executing what you wanted to do this year. You feel discouraged. You feel tired. You feel you can't take it. We are humans. Even me as a person who coaches other people, there are moments in my life where I feel, no, I've had enough of this. So God led me to this scripture in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. As I read it, I had time to meditate on it. I've had time to contemplate. I've had time to ponder on what Jesus was speaking. Jesus was calling anyone who was weary to come to him. He said, come unto me all not some, not a few, not only faith, all, all, meaning the entire world. If you feel your worry, Jesus' arms are wide open for you. He's saying, come unto me. He's saying, come and fall in my chest. Many times my daughter will fall and when she falls, she looks around to see who is there to catch her. And if I open my arms and I'm like, come to me, she'll run to me and I'll give her that comfort. She'll run in my arms and I'll console her. I'll give her cuddles. I'll tell her it's okay. All is well. You're safe. I'm here. Because that's what a parent does. And Jesus, him being a similitude of God on earth, 
his arms are open saying come to me all who are weary come to me all who are tired come to me all who are burdened and he will give you rest the word has burdens we've gone through a lot the last one year i've gone through a lot mentally physically emotionally financially in all aspects of my life have been tested but one thing that has kept me going is knowing that God's arms are wide open for me. I can run in any time without any inhibition, without any fears, without any fear of judgment. Because many things that happen in our life, we think, I've done this. If I go to God, will he be able to forgive me? God is love. His love, whatever love you feel for any of your family members, any of your relatives, any of your kids, if you're a parent, it's the same love or even greater love that God has over your life. So today the scripture is telling us, come, his arms are open, run to him and he will give you rest. And he's telling us also that his yoke is easy. He carries all the yokes of the world he carries all the burdens of the world and his burden is light. If his burden is light, you can load on your burden. If his burden is light, you can put more of whatever is bothering you, whatever is causing you that burnout, whatever anxiety you have, whatever things that are hindering you from moving in the direction that you want to go, you can pour them and put them on him. Jesus says, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your burdens upon him, and that him is God, for he cares about you. He really cares about you in the sense that he knows how many strands of hair you have on your head, that he's engraved your name in his palms, that he knew you even before the foundations of the world were laid, that he's given you his son. There's no greater love than a father who lays down his son for your sake. God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish. The only thing you have to do is to believe that God loves you to believe in the son jesus that he sent yesterday i was reading the scripture as you continue down in the book of john chapter 3 it says whoever has not believed he's already in sin the simple thing of believing that yeah god is there that jesus is the savior that jesus died for you it's as simple as that it does not get any complicated it does not get to any depth all you have to do is to believe it in your heart and confess it in your mouth that Jesus is Lord and accept him as your savior. In Romans chapter 10, verse nine to 10, it speaks it. When you do that, that is the entrance of your rest. And the rest that God gives surpasses all human rest. Because when you're rested, you have peace. When you're rested, you're calm. When you're rested, you don't worry. When you're rested, you don't have anxiety. When you're rested, you don't have depression. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request known to God. Is it burnout? Tell God. Thank you so much for my life. Thank you so much that I'm well. Thank you so much that I'm not bothered. Thank you so much that this burnout is gone. Thank you so much I'm not anxious. Thank you so much that you've healed me of depression. Thank you so much that you've healed me of anxiety. Thank you so much that I'm whole in you. Thank you so much that you've given me your son in whom I believe. And as you keep on reading his word, as you keep on meditating on the word of God, as you pray like this, you feel the heavy weight go off you. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that talk about how to live. Actually, the Bible is the best personal development book. Me as a personal development coach, I've read so many other human books written by human hand, 
inspired by human thoughts, but I've found that the Bible has almost all scriptures concerning any topic that I have to deal with with my client, any topic that I have to study or help my clients. And I've learned that when you implement this word of God, your life gets better. He's calling you to rest in him. He's saying, come to me. Coming means that you have to be willing to take that step to move in the direction where God is. Coming meaning that you have to take that step of journeying on that path to meet him. James 4, 8 says, draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. Meaning that God's position has not shifted. He's already there waiting for you. He's like that father of the prodigal son. The father of the prodigal son stood with his arms open every single day, waiting for the day his son would walk into the gate. And when the son walks in, what does he do? He tells everyone to stop what they're doing, to prepare a meal for him, to put a ring on his finger, to give him a robe, and to welcome him as his son. The same way God is willing to open his hands in fact, his hands are open for you. You just have to take the step of moving close to him and pouring out whatever is hindering you, whatever is causing you that burnout in his bosom. Pour it at him. Give it to him. Cast it on him because he cares about you. So the remedy to burnout the Christian way is to rest in God. Rest in him. The last episode I shared about Psalm 91 he who rests in the shadow of the almighty he who rests in the shadow of the most high he who rests in the shadow of god resting in his shadow meaning that you're not burnt out a person who is rested is not burnt out when you find your place of rest in god the burnout will cease the warriors will go the confusion will go the clarity you will get the joy you will have the happiness you will have Anything that is bothering you, bring it before God and that burnout won't be seen. So before I conclude this episode, I'd like to give you a chance. If you haven't accepted Christ as your personal savior, please, for you to conquer this burnout, the most important thing is to accept Christ in your life. Romans 9 to 10 tells us that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess the faith and you are saved. You have to believe it in your heart that Jesus died and rose again. And after you believed, you have to profess it in your mouth and say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. That's the reason why we lead people to salvation. Because that's all you need to say. That's all you need to believe. And as soon as you believe this, you're going to go on a journey of transformation because your life is under the Lordship of Christ. So if you're out there and you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, please repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die for me. While I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. Today, I believe it in my heart that Jesus died and rose again. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I welcome you, Jesus, to dwell in my heart. Today, I'm a new creation. For who the Son has set free, he's free indeed. Thank you so much for the price you paid. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. So if you've said this prayer, the next thing is that find yourself a Bible-based church where you're going to be taught the word of God under a leadership of a pastor who will be your shepherd. Also, get yourself a Bible and start reading it. You can start by reading the Gospels. The Gospels are a foundation of the life of Jesus. The life he lived is the life we emulate. So whatever Jesus did and whatever he taught is what we emulate. So start reading the Gospels. We have the Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John. And as you read this word, you'll find it working in you. Also, if you are in any way burnt out, believe that this message has gotten into your heart and given you direction on what you need to do. With burnout, 
just take it before God. You can do the practical things of resting, but rest in the comfort that God has you in the palms of his hands. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. And if it has benefited you in any way, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share it with a friend who it will benefit. Before I go, my Get Unstuck one-to-one -one coaching is open. You can get to read about it in the description of this episode. Also, the Transform Your Membership is live and kicking if you want to lose weight, if you want to build better habits, if you want to grow on your work with Christ and also start to transform yourself from inside out using biblical principles. The link is in the description of this episode. Otherwise, stay blessed and may the good Lord give you the rest you need. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye. I will praise Him, He's exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name.